Um, this episode's gonna get weird. You guys know it's gonna get weird, right? D and D minus. <laughs> our last episode, Bridget, Snedrick, you were saved by a dark-skinned, red-bearded, muscular elf who, if you'll remember, asked Snedrick if he ate ass and then pulled him over the ledge. Interestingly, I do remember that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was weird. <laughs> yeah, it was just moments ago. And as you make it to safety, you notice several striking things about him. The first is that he is perhaps the most muscular creature you've ever seen. Every line of this elf's frame is lean and cut. And the second is that the only clothing he's wearing is a giant grin. Behind him, you can see farmers tending grayish fields which slope upwards towards a bizarre village, which we'll talk about in a second. But behind that village, what at first you would have thought is a mountain or honestly, perhaps a set of moons is what you realize <laughs> is a mind-bogglingly ass. giant Moon. ass. <laughs> okay, first first of all, I want a logic complaint right here. I wasn't told that he was super buff and butt naked when I was forced to add. And like I would have said yes to the ass eating if I had known all of them and had all the information. You, you didn't notice that the guy was completely naked when he saved you? <laughs> to be fair, he only popped his head over the side. He didn't, he didn't give Snedrick the full Monty there. Fair. Yes, Snedrick, I feel like it was implied, wasn't it? <laughs> so, Snedrick, are you going to eat the ass now because you saved your life? That's kind of like etiquette. I would think at the very least I would owe him that. Yeah. <laughs> so this giant elf turns to all of you and says, So, travelers, you've sought the land of the ass eaters and found it. Welcome. Welcome home. I... You, you said that twice now. Do Home, have we been here before that we're not aware of? Have we met before? Oh, as if you don't know. But okay, okay. Pretend you don't know. I get it. Let's do it proper. <laughs> oh, those of us on the outskirts of the world, those the world threw away, we sought the Colossus for protection, for blessing, some of us even for death. And he provided it, for here we live in the land of the ass eaters. No laws of man to bind us. Nothing to want for. We just eat ass all day. And now, my friends, now so shall you, thanks to the great revealed truth. Wait, you live inside the butthole of a giant statue? Bridget, he looks mortified oh. at what you just said. Oh, no. He composes himself and says, Oi would never enter the Holy of Holies. We stay outside the ass, as is our way. I thought you said there was no laws to bind you. I'm not trying to be a smart ass. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what I can and can't get away with while I'm here eating some ass. We <laughs> protect the Holy of Holies. It is perhaps our only law, and I'm glad I told you. I'm glad now that you know. I'm glad that there's not a number two when it comes to the laws. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, that's the one law. Come, come, follow me, follow me. I'll follow him. I, I'll, I will also follow him to the ends of the earth, but, <laughs> and pun intended, but, um, wait, I'm sorry. You said, so we were inside the shins. <laughs> and I didn't get it. We were inside the shins, and now we're not inside the butthole. No, you were on the front of the shins you and oh. you made it over the cliffs of the shins. Okay. And now you're on the taint. I am so confused. I feel like as we're on the taint. What this colossus looks like and whether we are inside of it or outside of it. You're on you're on the outside and on the legs you can you can see they lead up to a giant butt. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so, for the layout. 
you're following this guy whose name you haven't asked. Um, what is your name, <laughs> sir? <laughs> oh, I'm glad you asked. Briggins Valorian's the name, but everyone around here calls me Briggsy, named for Dungeon Master level patron Briggsy Boy. Oh, thank you, Briggsy Boy. And why do you say uh, welcome home? Have we met before? No, but everyone is welcome in the land of the ass eaters. Aye. So you don't get a lot of tourism is what I'm taking away? No. All who enter the land of the ass eaters come once and stay forever. Are we all supposed to um <clears throat> wear the uniform? No, 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 no. You can wear whatever you want. If you're comfortable in that, wear it. If you choose to strip down like I do, that's your choice as well. I get naked. I was <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I was like, any second now. (laughs) Surprised. And Dave, as you do that, he gives you like a a knowing nod. And he's like, I knew you'd be the one. I knew. I I nod back. I I would too, but I don't want to let loose my wolves. It's a whole thing. It was a a cold, (laughs) cold day when we were going up the shins. It's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Talk about your beam of frost. So you're following Briggsy. uh, As you grow closer to the village, the farmers that you noticed in the background earlier, they come into view and you realize that they aren't actually tilling fields, as you assumed from a distance, but rather seem to be using giant man-sized razors to shave thick wedges of gray from the earth, which they are now loading onto carts. And Briggsy notices you watching and says, now, don't you worry, it doesn't hurt the big fella. Or at least if it does, he hasn't bothered to knock us off as a result. Some say time has numbed us to all feeling. But personally, I think we're just too tiny to matter to a big brute like him. (laughs) And that's just fine by me. So you guys shaving his leg hair? Is that what's happening? Uh, Or is it the crack hair? are Are you shaving his skin off? Yeah, that's what seems to be the case. They seem to be actually shaving like chunks of meat. So when you say... Eating ass, you're really talking about eating like thigh. Oh, wow. Oh, I see someone is close to the great truth, but I won't spoil that for you now. No, no, no. I won't explain it nearly as well as the priests or (laughs) others in the village might, but you're close, man. You're close. Are you a wizard by any chance? I I have, I I will, technically, I don't have my certificate because of a bitch. Um, I, I don't mean that as a gender specific <laughs> term, by the way, when I say that I'm talking about a feller. Oh, but I'm a wizard otherwise. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this in the land of the ass eaters, you are a wizard and you're close. You're close to the great divine truth. Let me tell you. I'm a warlock. Does that count? I wonder if you have the same requirements for your doctors up here. No, there are no requirements for doctors up here. That is why (laughs) so very many of us die. So (laughs) you walk for a bit longer and you find yourself in one of the strangest cities you've ever seen. The buildings range from simple tents to castles to odd metal sculptures that you can watch people moving around inside. In the streets, most people are elven, but all races are present, and people are dressed in all manner of ways, from fancy costumes to completely naked, like Briggsy is. And above it all, an iron sign above the gate to the city says, do crime, eat ass. (laughs) Briggsy turns to you all and says, now, while you're in the village, you must know we follow only two rules. I know I said one before. Yeah, you said one uh, earlier. You very I clearly know. said one. I even Could made a number seen. two poop said, don't joke. go in the butthole. <laughs> Remember the second rule just now? That's okay. on me. One of the, that's, that's on me. Uh, we follow no rule or no custom except for that of kindness and self-preservation. Do no harm to others is our uh, only law. And stay away from the holy of holies. We have no need for money. Or property. There are only gifts here in the land of the ass eaters. Find a place to live if you like. Or build your own. Whatever you want. There's a school for you to study magic in. An armory for you to train your body. And gain weapons. Any questions you ask. Just reach out to someone and they'll help you. Assuming they feel like it. No matter what. Family dinner is at sundown. And don't be late. Or all the good stuff will be gone. And he sort of. Looks at the moons, or he looks up at the ass for a second and goes, Oh, is the sun over the moons already? I'll be late for my shift at the Holy of Holies. Uh, come find me there if you need anything. And then sort of jogs away into the crowds of the city. 
Yo, here's the thing. I kind of like it here, but I'm pretty goddamn sure there's a third or fourth rule that motherfuckers forget. Yeah, like <laughs> hiding on the rules. He's I don't remember. Yeah. Later, I agree. yeah, I don't suppose there's another way up to the head of the Colossus other than the butthole. The, the dick? I'm guessing the dick. That would be... <laughs> 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 or I the hips. we could do the reach around. Yeah, there's so much body besides. I feel like the dick's going to be easier <laughs> to climb than the hip. and dick. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you wanted to go up the dick one way or the other. Like I feel like, I want, yes, I mean, you, well, yeah. you guys telling me you don't want to go up the dick? <laughs> <laughs> it could change while we're climbing it. I mean, it's... Why oh, that's true. Somebody? That's yeah, true. If it, we climb that thing correctly, it's going to just turn into a <laughs> shortcut. Yeah, we'll get all the way to the navel. <laughs> I'm a sensual climber. <laughs> yeah, based on how you were rolling when you were climbing the shins, you're going to get <laughs> launched up to the face in no time. <laughs> <sighs> all right. Yeah, I feel like there might be a pubic forest we can climb through on the other side. I don't know. I think there's a forest on this side, too. But How is everybody feeling? I, confused, very confused. I feel confused. like I feel currently 11 out of 27 is how I feel. <laughs> you only feel 11 27ths of your best. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, how is everybody else doing? I'm like 19 24ths ballpark. I'm right. pretty sure I'm about right. 17 17 but I could be wrong. I, I could go for a long Ooh. rest, though. You could probably do a backflip without shitting yourself if you wanted to. Well, if That's you're going to do it, do it. Place let's to not do push it. our luck. <laughs> let's not push our luck on this. Claw? I want to get the hell out of here as fast as possible. This is all very really? confusing. We're well, at so Ass Burning Man. It sounds fucking amazing. It's like <laughs> John Galt's Valley plus Burning Man plus ass eating. But did he say that the only thing that they eat is asked like their entire nutrition system is based around. Well, I don't see anything else they're growing around here. This is so. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, hey, there's some berries growing. Never mind. Never mm -hmm. mind. Yeah. <laughs> In uh, that the forest berries of, of dingle. trees. Yeah. yeah. Do we ask somebody about the food situation? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're in a city. There are people walking and bustling around all around you. I would like to take a short rest currently, or a long rest would be even better. That'd I want to eat idea. some food and ass and rest. I agree. <laughs> I'm curious when you want to do analingus, what do you say around here? <laughs> I just want to find that out. So, yeah, I'm good with a long rest or at least long enough for Bridget to rest. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You try and find an inn or what are you doing? Yes, find an inn. Hey, when you're in ass town, you try to find an in, right? <laughs> so. Or an out, either way. <laughs> <laughs> so, strangely enough, you walk around the village for an hour or so, but you don't see an in. You don't see what you can see as a business. You don't see any stalls or vendors. People just seem to be going about their way. There doesn't seem to be any money or trade to speak of. It's just people living. Where do you go to get a drink here? I think you just get what a drink. What would you drink here? Thank you, Bridget. Yeah, that's the real question. Um, well, I, I'm going to stop somebody and I'm going to ask them. So you stop a squid creature um, with sort of what? bluish skin. Can we go ahead wearing... and stop not a squid? Just, uh... <laughs> right. Hey, hey, this is an anal town. I'm stopping the squid. <laughs> <laughs> stop okay. the squid. Withdrawn. <laughs> really curious about what this squid has to say about this town. Yep. He's wearing several Victorian suits on the different sides of his body. So he looks like four different guys in different suits, but he speaks <laughs> common. And, and when you stop him, he says, yes, my friend, what can I do for you? I, I'm just curious if a fella just arrived and needed a long rest of some sort. I mean, there's no hotels and no money around here. What do y'all just find a bed and crash or what? Yes. I mean, if you need a place to stay, you'll be more than welcome in my home. After all, this is the land of the ass eaters. Well, it looks like we solved that problem, y'all. <laughs> yeah. He seemed pretty excited about it. Like a little too excited. Yeah. I whisper. <laughs> hey, look, man, when the people in the land of the ass eaters seem too excited, you go along, okay? <laughs> all right. Could be positive. So he, he beckons you forward and he goes, yes, yes. Well, what do you need? What do you want? 
Well, my friend Bridget's only feeling 11 27 of her best. She could probably use a long rest. Oh, is it healing that you think, my friend? Come, come, I should take you to the healer. The, the best healer in town, mark my words. And he sort of bustles off ahead of you into the crowd. Oh, oh, I don't, I don't like this. Am I here for this? Oh, Another? you're all there. We're all here. Okay, good. Oh, I, I don't like the sound of that. Well, are we following him or not? Yeah, we're following him. You follow him, again, swerving through this crazy city until he takes you to sort of a large dome. Yeah, it's, it's bright white, and he throws open the front flap, and he says, inside, inside, I'll do the introductions, I'll do the introductions. Let's go in the yurt. I'm surprised Eli didn't know what the word yurt meant, but all right. <laughs> Good thing the word yurt. You go inside the yurt, and there is a small gnomish woman sitting there, and you notice that she has incredibly long, magically enhanced hair. Her hair takes up most of the room. It's been woven intricately into furniture. Uh, there's parts where she's made it into carpet. There's also other parts where she's made it into wall hangings and even used it as forms of light fixtures. In fact, most of the room, except for the outer yurt, is made up of her hair. And she says, Hello. Welcome. Do you require healing? I, yeah, we could use some healing. I, okay. Uh, okay. Maybe. I'm dying to know about the hair. I mean, yeah. do you just do you have to be here all the time, or can you just stick your feet through the bottom of this yurt and walk it around <laughs> and shit? <laughs> oh, you noticed, have you? As a girl, we I was notice. fascinated we with hair, stories yeah. and tales, but uh, an unfortunate magic spell brought a lot of my, shall we say, dreams into reality. I was shunned and attacked and spited by the people and places where I live. But now I'm here in the land of the ass eaters. And not only is it fine for me to live like this, but I am praised for I am the healer of ass eaters. And with that, she waves her arms in front of her. And not only are your health points restored, uh, you've actually been given a long rest as well. So go ahead and do that. Right. Whoa. Nice. Uh, excuse me, I say, stroking my mustache. How how do you keep your hair from like fr growing this? How do you keep it growing this long without getting brittle? Oh, it's my story. You wish. Come, 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 come. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Where? And there's. She's got hair furniture all over the place. She's got hair mm. cushions, yeah. hair lazy boys, hair couches. Oh my god. I am gonna sit down. On Shotgun any, hair I'm lazy just boy. gonna feel what I'm about to sit down <laughs> onto. Whoa. This is strong. Thank you. As a girl, I was afraid of being a gnome. Other creatures were so much bigger, so much stronger, so much better at climbing the shins than I was. And yet, I wanted to be big and strong like them. So I drank a growing potion. Well, an off-market growing potion, shall we say, and my <laughs> hair sprouted for the next day like this. And it was only when I found myself in the land of the ass eaters that I was accepted, loved, and able to find my place in the world, just like you have. Welcome home. People keep saying that. I guess nobody leaves. I feel like they want to trap us. I mean, I'm sitting right here. Did you say that out loud? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I'm, I'm happy for you to hear us. It seems like they want to trap us. <laughs> we just we just met this bird. We don't really know who he is. It's fine. Yeah, he's not with it. us. Although I will say it's a little weird for, for outsiders when you show up in a place first time and everybody says, welcome home. It's kind of a weird greeting. I'm not saying I'm not judging it or whatever. It's just a little bit hard to get used to. Is it us who's weird or is it the world that is weird? Okay. Huh? So Common it, denominator. That's, that's a thing that. Normal people Everybody say. Everybody says that. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah. Um, could you tell us by any chance about the um, you know, above area, the up? If we go up from here, what 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 happens? Where hmm. what that looks like? Well, there are those who try to climb uh, above the pass, and uh, those who try to climb round the front. But they are dangerous and treacherous paths. That if you are not extremely gifted climbers, I would not recommend. Why? Why do you seek higher in the Colossus? Do you seek to make some kind of sacrifice to him or speak to yep. him? 
Yep, definitely the respectful sacrifice. So can you just describe the dick? Because that's really what I'm getting at. <laughs> oh, I have not seen, as you call it, the dick. For in order to do so, I would need to traverse the Black Forest. And all who enter the Black Forest never leave. <sighs> okay. Well, I mean, you could say the same about this town, though. That's not necessarily bad. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they just get in there and there's a lot of ass to eat and it's just a good old time. That's true. <gasps> what if he's asses on both sides? And at that, she faints with excitement. <laughs> Man, we have not been able to talk to anybody recently. <laughs> I reckon we got pretty good and healed there. Thank you, Squid Feller. I'm sorry, what was your name? My name is Bolfenstein. <laughs> well, well done off the top of your of head. Of course it is. Named for Dungeon Master Lever patron, Steve Bolfenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Bolfenstein. <laughs> well, yes. that's a great name. My family came over on the Mayflower. <laughs> <laughs> Did they? The fantasy Did they? Mayflower. To I'll have ass? you know the Buffensteins built this country. <laughs> the Buffensteins? The Protestant Buffenstein. Okay. <laughs> so. All right. Well, All right. I, I reckon that Black Forest is, uh, you know, we got a pretty linear map going here. I mean. I, I, I well, seem to, seems the guy is at the hole, right? The guy who met us said we could go meet right, him That's right. The, the naked needed... fellow. Yeah. Yeah. Briggsy. Briggsy. Thank you. Uh, he is at the Holy of Holies. Well, I mean, come on. We're not going to come all this way and not at least see the asshole up front, right? Up close, right? I mean. <laughs> is anybody else feeling particularly okay with their body right now? Like, like super like okay with how I, their body turned out? As you can see, I feel great about my body. Thank you. I am, well, ugh, whatever. Uh, okay, I'm, a, I just, I'm just grateful noise. that I don't have a bunch of like little people living in my butthole, you know? Mm. I don't know if right. I'm grateful for that or not, but um, <laughs> I'd never considered whether I was grateful about that or not. That's As you're thing. discussing whether or not you're grateful to have people living in your butthole. <laughs> Has the squid guy left? No, he's still standing there. Okay, dang it. As you're having that discussion about whether or not you're grateful to have people in your butthole, you hear a massive gong crash across the city and people everywhere begin to pour out of their makeshift residences around you towards the center of town. And Bufenstein says to you, Oh, ho, 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 family dinner. Are you hungry? You must be hungry. Come, 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 come. It's family dinner time. I could go for some ass. Follow oh. me. I feel like it's going to be ass. Is the woman still passed out? Yeah. Can I possibly steal a lock of Don't hair really steal. quick? Don't oh, steal. Do it. Jesus. What do I roll? She's passed out. You don't have to do anything. Can I roll okay, for cool. Morgan not rolling? Can you block a roll with a roll? <laughs> it's got to be magical hair. We could probably use it eventually. Can I roll for side tackling Morgan? <laughs> I, I roll for two votes. <laughs> All right. It's not democratic. You can't democratically side I tackle Morgan. I have 15, but what, what's what? what uh... I have like a, I have my portents. I could like use one of them to make him fail. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be dexterity or strength? You guys, you guys act like I'm gonna like get in trouble for a passed out woman, even knowing that I stole some hair. I feel uncomfortable <laughs> about this whole situation. Wow, this is this saying is... an awful lot about just you personally <laughs> now, Morgan. You're getting, uh, it's it's magic. magic. Hey, Claw, hey, Claw why don't you head over to Hot hair. Topic at the mall, and we'll just go over to the family dinner. I am surprised that uh, that our Claw friend here hasn't been me tooed already. This is <laughs> Well, I'm Cla it, there is no need for side tackling because Claw, as you reach down towards her hair, she awakens slightly and she says, Oh, did you want some hair? Take it, take it. Everything in the land of the ass eaters is a gift. See? And she cuts off a lock of her hair and hands it to you. Perfect. And Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, now I want some hair too. If, if oh, you have mind. some hair. Yeah, oh, she cuts off a lock of her hair and hands out hair to all of you. <laughs> All right, I didn't I'm want adding hair to my inventory to see you guys. No, I'm, I'm yeah, going to no, throw this in out there. in the garbage as soon as we walk outside. <laughs> I like your jokes. <laughs> By the way, the gong is still going, and Hoofenstein is sort of gesturing at you with his arms to go to family dinner. Yeah, I think we, I say we go to All family right. dinner. Let's check that dinner out. Hey, 
everybody. Just jumping in for a second. Thanking you for listening to the show. Hope you're enjoying it. This episode was a ton of fun to record for a bunch of reasons that you're about to hear and that you've heard already. It's been a while since we got to play in just a silly, silly space. So this episode absolutely did that for us. If you're enjoying the show and you haven't given us a review on iTunes or any of those websites yet, please go ahead and do that. It actually makes a huge difference for people finding the show and hearing about the show, which means we can make more of it for you. So if you like it, do that. And if you love the show, you got a couple extra bucks to throw our way. Why not head over to patreon.com forward slash D and D minus. We've got an extra episode up there of lasers and feelings called the worst and the dimmest and not one, but two dungeon master corners there for you to listen to, which is me sort of doing a Q and a about dungeons and dragons, what it's like to be a DM, all that fun stuff. And you can get all that content for giving us as little as a dollar over at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus. All right. So thanks again so much for listening to the show. I'll let you get back to it. So in the town square is a makeshift buffet of the most delicious assortment you've ever seen. The only thing curious about it is that everything you can see is meat. There are thick steaks on a grill. There's barbecue, smoked and roasted meats. There's a carving station. There's roasts. There's meatballs. But absolutely everything on offer is meat. Even the beverages appear to either be water or a dark red liquid that you guys think might be blood. Mm. Nice. Buffenstein loads up his plate with some meatballs and some roast and sort of gestures over to a picnic table and says, the, oh, over here, over here, there are seats over here. All right, I'm going to load up too and I'm going to join Bufenstein. Yeah, I'm getting all the different stuff, not just the meatballs and the roasting. Yeah, right. Nice. I'm getting a bunch of that blood too. Right. You load up your plates, every station you go to, people are friendly and welcoming, whatever you want, you can have. People keep saying welcome home a lot, but otherwise you sit down at the table and Bufenstein says, so what do you think of the place so far? Well, the meatballs are pretty good. I'm considering becoming a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all being judgy. This is some good ass. Um, <laughs> I think well, it's poop, not ass. <laughs> As what, what would people eat around here if they were vegetarian? Well, I, I'm afraid that they would starve. After all, there's, there's only ass to eat. It's the, the land, land of the ass. Of the ass I mean, it's yeah, it's right there. Right, on it's the, in the name. All right. Name, thank you. I like this guy. He, he <laughs> fucking gets it. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going to kind of look around and see if, if anybody else is going back for seconds because I don't want to be the only one. I don't know if that's cool. But <laughs> Oh, people are going back for seconds, for thirds. All right. Cool. Some people are just turning their food into like weird statues and then gifting it to other tables. A guy comes over with like a, a weird statue self-portrait made out of meatballs and he places it in front of Dave and says, a gift and then just wanders off into the distance. Am I supposed? Okay, you're walking away. Am I supposed to He's eat gone. this or just... All right. Who knows? He's gone. I'm going to eat it. Oh, uh, can we look? Is Brig Can we see Briggsy anywhere or is he not to be seen? No, he, he is not here at family dinner. Okay. Uh, I kind of whispered to Bridget, do we maybe want to try and sneak over to the hole and see if he's there? Uh, I'm curious what it smells like. I mean, I know it ain't going to be good. I'm just curious. Right. I figured we could leave to, to stay, to go. So we're not like, you know, pulling any attention away. I, I'm getting... Pretty big donor party vibes from this. So I think I, I'll go with you. <laughs> Fantasy well, donor party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Dave and Snedrick, you're staying. You're not going to go see the Holy Infolis? No, I'm going to go. I, I'm going to see right. my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, no need to split make... us up, I think. <laughs> so as you make the long walk up the thighs of the Colossus and approach the Holy of Holies, you can see that there's a makeshift guard station set up at the entrance. There's five or six guards standing around sort of lazily chatting. Some of them are arguing playfully. Some of them are joking around. And you see that Briggsy is among them. Yo, Briggsy, you want to give us a tour of the ass? Or the, sorry, the perimeter. Not, of course, in it. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Ha have you gotten your fill of the city already? Well, we're just seeing all the sights. You know. got, got some good food. Ah, yep. This is the Holy of Holies, my friend. The only way inside the Colossus. 
Is are we sure right. there's no other way inside the No other way inside the Colossus. I mean, perhaps there are other ways, but the only sure way inside the Colossus is right here through the Holy of Holies. And we, the people of the land of the Earth, you just defend it. After all, if everyone was allowed to just walk into the Holy of Holies, who knows what might happen? So nobody's ever done that? Nobody's ever gone inside? Oh, hundreds, perhaps thousands have gone inside. Many have died, but that's not what we care about. What we care about is them damaging our benefactor. So we, the people of the land of the Ass Eaters here, stand guard and ask all those who would venture inside the Colossus to think twice and choose another way. You're talking about the dick, right? No. What other way? We ask them not to go inside at all. After all, our great benefactor stays alive and keeps us whole. People running around inside his body wouldn't be very good for him, would it? Well, I reckon it depends on what they're doing. I mean, maybe we're just saying that um, you know some some of us are grateful for that. So yeah, I don't know. He just got rid of a bunch of his his shin splints. So I mean, I'm not gonna say that anyone in our party has intentionally ever put a living thing inside of its butthole, but I'm not gonna say that none of us have either. You know. You know who would love this place is Floon. Floon would love this place. (laughs) (laughs) Do we have those birds? (laughs) Aye, I think he would. So Briggsy looks at you all a little bit, I'm not going to say suspiciously, but warily, and he says, "Eh, might I ask, friends, and and this is the land of the Ass Eaters, so feel free not to answer, but uh, what brings you to the land of the Ass Eaters? Mostly we heard about the meatballs. And figure they would be real, and they were, they were really good. But, you know, we just figured while we were here on the Colossus, we wanted to kind of see all the, you know, all the bits and pieces that he was willing to show us. And uh, Make a deception check for me, Snedrick. Uh, what is, uh, what am I? Uh, roll a d20. And add your charisma, I think? Mm-hmm. So it says under deception, it says minus one, but yeah, that's, oh, yep, that is yeah. my charisma. Minus one. Seven, so six. Yeah, he sort of looks at you skeptically and he says, Well, friends, ah, if you don't want to tell me, you don't have to. Obviously, everyone's got their own stories. I just wanted to know if I could help you make yourselves at home. All right, well, one of you more deceptive <laughs> motherfuckers should probably be taking yeah. the lead on that. I, I'm not much more deceptive than you. Yeah, me either. Hold on, checking. Deception. I'm a plus five on deception. <laughs> You're plus five? You should do that. All right. Well, we should, I mean, it's kind of late now, but we, we, yeah, it's good yeah. to know that in the future. That's so, um, Briggsy, just uh, follow up on what we just said. Uh, we have a different truth, truthful thing. <laughs> um, what we actually, the actual story behind our trip here is uh, we wanted to go up to uh, possibly the top of the Colossus and make a uh, very respectful offering to him, to honor him. Hmm. You know, you're not the first to tell me that, but can I be honest with y'all? I'd really love it if you were. Yeah. I mean, this is the land of the ass eaters. After Do you want to roll a die just to see how honest you are? <laughs> Let's step away from the uh, Holy of Holies for a moment. You're afraid it's going to echo? Hey, never mind. <laughs> the reason we protect the Holy of Holies is it is the only way to the top of the Colossus. Now, I, I wish I could help you. I really do. But you let one person in and then... Two, then three. Someone could do damage inside. Someone could access the life stone. And that might do. Well, that might do the big fella in. Sorry, the life stone? Yes, the life stone. Uh, Many believe it is what keeps the Colossus alive and strong for all these millions and millions, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of thousands, or tens of tens of years. Okay. We don't know how old the Colossus okay. is. So there's a, there's a magical ass bead. Probably not millions. Uh, it's not in the ass or in the Holy of Holies. It's all the way at the top, inside the brain itself. Or that's what I've heard. Don't, don't let people hear you talking too much about going inside, if you know what I mean. It's uh, frowned upon. And when I say frowned upon, you know that's serious because... This is the land of the ass eaters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. You only have the two yeah. rules, and that's yeah. the two rules. Yeah, and that's well, one of them. One more time: don't go in the ass and be nice. Those are the two rules. <laughs> don't go in the ass. Be nice. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, God, I have a question for you. Yeah, because it's been an, 
a, a bit since we played. Um, is the stone of living what we're here to find? Yep, life stone is what you are going after. Oh. So, Briggsy, did any, anyone ever come here trying to, like, steal that life stone? <laughs> Why do you think we started guarding this place? People sought the life stone, thinking it would bring them immortality, great power, the ability to raise the dead. Eventually, the ass eaters, peaceful as we are, we, we banded together around the big fella just to just to make sure he was safe and whole. We, uh, we watched the Holy of Holies in shifts of two to three, all night long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow, that's some amazing dedication and so noble of y'all to do. So if we were, if we decided to live here because of how good the meatballs are and all, and all that, could we volunteer for that? Of course you could. Roll a deception check for me. Damn hey, hey there, uh, <laughs> Dave, Dave, you want to offer to ask that question? Hey, Briggsy, um, just uh, follow up on that same question. Same question. Um, would it be possible for us if, you know, we, we settle here, uh, could we get on that guard duty? That sounds like a fun job. Briggsy says, I, I, don't interrupt Snedrick. What were you saying, Snedrick? <laughs> well, check for me. No, no, Snedrick, he's got to go take a shit. Um, I just uh, address me directly. F 15. That's uh, 16 and uh, minus one. And 14. No, no, it's six, no, 16, and then I got a minus oh. one, so 15. Oh, okay, so 15. He looks at you and he says, I, I suppose you could. Um, I'm just saying that because we kick a lot of ass, and, and, you know, I mean, you know, what, what needs some ass kickers more than an ass, you know? Hmm, yeah, I, I suppose I could talk to the captain of the guard. After all, you only have to live here for three years, and then you, you can do your first guard duty. <laughs> oh, it's awesome, because y'all have a pretty hot, gnome lady with long hair i was thinking about you know seeing if she was yes. single anywho tell you what you live here for one year just one year and i'll make sure all of yous make it into the guard well that's awfully sweet of you man that's great any uh, chance you could uh knock that year down a little bit like just fast track us because we're like I, really I really good at this i have a question yes so while we were on our way up here we hmm. noticed that there, the the Colossus has a bit of a splint problem in his shins. Yes, yeah. Well, all of us had to make it past the sh splints to be here. Yeah, I, it just makes me wonder what kind of of things are like lurking and causing the Colossus pain up in the in the chest or the the stomach area or the mouth. Maybe he's de has he when was the last time he went to the dentist? These are things that we don't know that. Perhaps we're not meant to know. Did you know that tooth decay can really lead to a lot of problems, though? So you might want to go up there and check. Even heart problems, really. You, a lot of people don't know that. Make a persuasion roll for me, Bridget. All right. I will do that. Oh, shite. Uh, that's a three plus. <laughs> <laughs> Minus one. That's a three. That's like a three. <laughs> Bridget was just kidding. Um, I'd like to say the same thing. <laughs> oh, oh, Dave, Dave, Bridget. do you have charisma? Really? All right. I'm uh, extremely it. charismatic. That's actually like if, if you were to put a weird chart on a website, it would probably have pluses. <laughs> <laughs> Bridget, when you say that, Briggsy sort of takes a step back from the group and he says, "All right, you four. I think I've had just enough of this conversation. You're obviously looking for your way inside the Colossus. So I'll be as straight with you as I can. If you're going to make it inside the Colossus, you're going to have to get through me and the guards. And <laughs> honestly, I don't think you're up for the fight. So unless you plan on sneaking by us sometime later, maybe you just make yourselves at home. And then he turns around and walks away from you. All right. I'm going to cast Thunder Wave on them. <laughs> You're gonna cast Thunder Wave on yeah, the guard. On the most on the most on muscular guy we've ever seen in our lives. Do a do a wisdom check for me, Bridget. <laughs> Roll a wisdom check for me. I will do that right now. Ooh. Ooh. Uh that is an 18 plus uh three. So that's 21 on wisdom. These guards could beat the shit. Shit out of you. Gosh. You do not want to fight these I'm guards. Fine. That's fair. Bridget, have you wisely decided to not cast that spell <laughs> I, that you seem to be pulling I, out of your uh, pocket? I'm I'm gonna put that spell right back in my pocket. It's it's cool. where I keep my spells, this yep. pocket. I say we just move away and kind of talk it over. Hey, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, why don't we move away from this? 
Yeah. Yo, I expected it would smell a lot worse. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> Agree. I've got a bunch of sneaky stuff, which can sometimes affect the whole party. So we might as well just do that. Yeah. I say one or two of us should kind of observe the guards from a distance and see if like we can get an idea of, like, you know, it. do they walk in Metal Gear-esque patterns? <laughs> <Do> they, <laughs> you know, when do, we, we'll- when do they do their shift changes? That kind of shit. And I think Claw really is the one that, you know, given his uh, education and thievery and whatnot, would be the right guy to case that. Well, the rest of us go smoke some snogs, man. Well, yeah, that (laughs) or do we want to kind of like what geographically, what are we looking at? Is this the only like, is this a narrow path that this is the only way through? Is there a second butthole? Is that what you're asking? (laughs) No, but is there an outer line area where like we can, you know. Well, there was a black forest that led around to the urethra. Right. That's, there that's there is hole. the Black Forest. You can actually see the pattern of the guards as you stand there. They they just sit out front. There's five or six guards now, um, but as you guys are discussing and weighing your options, you see that a few of them go home and that for the evening shift, because the sun is setting past the ass, there are just the two guards left sort of boredly watching the Holy of Holies. Well, I have passed without trace, which... Read that spell description for me, Morgan. A veil of shadows and silence radiates from you, masking you and your companions from detection. For the duration, each creature you choose within 30 feet of you, including you, has a plus 10 bonus to dexterity, stealth checks, and can't be tracked except by magical means. Well, that seems like uh, precisely what we need right at this moment. Yeah, I was trying to see if they have any sort of, like, those magical means is the reason I was kind of worried. Right. You know, if, if we have a... If we do doesn't anything. look like it. Just looks like cool. two Perfect. buff dudes <laughs> like Briggsy. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Morgan, before you cast that spell, please join me in a doodly do. Claw, you stand in the dusty farmhouse headquarters of the Brotherwood of the Way of the Shadow. Its leader, Alex, who you just met, walks you through its wide open space. Along the walls, you can see it's lined with Grappling hooks, smoke bombs, and finely woven outfits of earthen-colored leaves. Alex turns to you and said, You see, Claw, we spent years studying the various ways to become invisible. We tried physical enhancement, like these camouflage outfits. We tried magic, but at the very core of stealth is the one great secret. Boredom. (laughs) And as he says this, you reach the middle and end of the hall, and you see that this area is actually brightly lit, but it's covered in all manner of things. There are sports betting books, several projectors that appear to be filled with vacation slides, and shelves upon shelves of black and white East German movies. Alex turns to you and says, look at me, Claw. Look at me, and I want you to really try and concentrate. And as he does, he takes out a lawn and garden magazine, says to you, thing most people don't understand about watering a lawn is that it's not about doing it every day. It's about doing it well and when the lawn really needs it. And your mind, no matter how hard you try, wanders. You (laughs) you think of your home village or of the trip here with Blade. And before you know it, Alex is literally invisible to you. He stops talking and puts the magazine away. And then you can see him again. Turns to you and says, Claw. This is the secret of passing without a trace. So let's find you something boring to talk about. So, Claw, you do have pass without a trace, but because you were trained by the Brotherhood of the Shadow, the way that you use this spell is with boring small talk. And if you're going to cast it on everyone, you all need to make boring small talk the entire time you're trying to pass these guards. Oh, I love this. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> I would like to tell you all about... <laughs> now, Claw's casting the spell, okay. so Claw has to lead <clears throat> off with the, the, the boring right. small talk. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> tell us about a meal. So how's it going, everybody? <laughs> but we How just ate thing? poop in an ass, so like, <laughs> that's not boring at all. <laughs> so- Look deep into Claw's heart. Cla- what is Claw's Cla- most boring Cla- piece of small talk? <laughs> How have you been lately? Let's just talk about the meatballs. That'll probably be boring to them, too. Go ahead. Lead us off, Claw. Start talking. 
Those meatballs were meaty. They meaty, medium. You know, I couldn't medium, help but medium, wonder what kind of sauce. Like, it almost seemed, tasted like there was a grape jelly kind of a flavor in there. Sort of. Yeah. The yeah. sauce of a meatball. A little bit of syrup, yeah. too. I'll say the yeah. most bestest meatballs I've ever had. Mm-hmm. As you speak, the air around you just starts to waver. And even though you're talking to each other about this subject, as you go into the details of the recipe and your speculations on how they might taste and how they were made, you waver out of each other's vision and feel yourselves enclosed in a dome of boring bullshit. <laughs> hey, so you, you guys want to hear about a conversation I had at work? Yeah, yeah. tell us week. about the people tell that you don't about like. Your friends that we don't Dave know. disappears for fucking ever. <laughs> <laughs> he vanishes. <laughs> He enters the void where he sees God himself. <laughs> so yeah, you you have now been you now have passed without a trace, and as long as you keep up the boring small talk, you will have plus ten to your stealth tricks to try and make it past these guards. Cool. Yeah. So all right, how how quick do we move, and how long do we have to keep talking? You have it for up to one hour, and it's a concentration spell, so... So do, do you want us to make boring small talk for an hour? Because that feels like bad radio, Eli. <laughs> no, just, just while you're sneaking past the guards, you're going to make boring small talk. I think talk, that and might then... actually end up being the best radio ever mm. if we actually commit to an hour of this. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I guess podcast for a little while. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> Hey, you know what kind of pisses me off? You know what television commercial annoyed me <laughs> the other really week? really grinds your gears. All I'll right. tell you. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the iTunes rankings, but helping people fall asleep is right the fuck up there. <laughs> so what do you do for a living? All right. Everyone roll your stealth checks for me. Plus 10. That, uh, plus Ooh. 10? We add 10 mm-hmm. to it? 28. Yeah, that's a 17 for me. Uh, six plus ten, sixteen. Uh, sixteen, seventeen. But I'm I'm completely disappeared because I talked about a conversation from work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. He should get a plus plus twelve. Um, mm-hmm. I have I I rolled an eighteen, so twenty eight. Twenty eight. All right, Claw. Seventeen plus 10. seventeen total. No, seventeen plus ten. Okay, so you have a twenty seven, and Bridget and Dave, you ended up with, or you rolled seventeens, or I, I rolled a seven, and oh, you rolled a 17. seven, so yeah, and. Dave, you rolled a six? Yes. So Claw and Snedrick, you pass. They don't even notice you. But the guard sort of blearily wavers as Dave and Bridget gets to him. And he says, wait, wait a second. What what were you guys just talking about? I'm going to cast a minor illusion of the Kool-Aid man running away from them to make that (laughs) like the uh, from in the other direction. The fantasy Kool-Aid man. The fantasy Kool-Aid man. <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. Make a... You're going to call that wisdom? Uh, yeah, you, that's... You make it a spell. One, yeah, so. no, I mean, it is a, a spell. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's a yeah, cantrip. So the, uh, my question is, how does the guard... I'm figuring out how the guard fucking reacts to that. <laughs> He looks over at Kool-Aid Man for a second, at least for a second. I mean, just, like, he's only going to see him like out of the corner of his eye running off into the woods and to the dark forest, right? Like He's not going to see him for more than a split second. So it's just to get him to look over for a second as uh, Dave gets by. Sure. Um, is, is there like a... On Minor Illusion, is there like a somebody has to do a wisdom saving throw or something like that on the spell description? No. No? All right. Oh, it no, it does. It checks against your spell save DC. It's uh, 13. The 13. All right. So let's see if he sees the Kool-Aid man. That's a six. So he fucking sees. He's like, <laughs> Whoa. you know what? I'll, I'll be with you guys in a second. That's the fucking Kool-Aid man. And he wanders off and the path to the Holy of Holies is open. I'd also just like to add that there's um, the difference between GDP and GNP is actually pretty significant economically. What there's... would be the difference, though? I've never really understood <laughs> yeah, no, it's that. It's gross right? domestic so it's... product versus gross national product. Domestic product is the all the goods and services added up that happen in the borders of the country. But the gross national product, it's based on all the citizens of the country, regardless of where this... that... You make your way into the Holy of Holies. And so powerful is the boring small talk you leave behind that the guard's very memory of you 
even that fraction of a second that he saw you fades into darkness and you're remembered by the land of the ass eaters no more. And we're in the ass. We're in you're the, in the ass. ass. Ass time. Bium, 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 bium. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.